Hello and very warm welcome to this course on probability methods in civil engineering. In this course, I will try to uh, discuss about several probabilistic methods that are very useful in different uh, disciplines of civil engineering. There are uh, several modules in this uh, course material, uh, namely about uh, uh, 7 modules are there and in each module there are uh, several lectures are there and these lectures are oriented uh, successively in such a way that it will help the audience a step by step understanding of and get some idea about the um, overall uh, area of this probabilistic method that are very useful in different uh, specializations in civil engineering. So, today being the uh, first lecture uh, and this is the only lecture of the first module and in this uh, lecture basically the introduction will be given and the motivation to uh, learning these methods and its usefulness to tackle different situation, different field condition, different uh, data analysis will be discussed. And this will be in general for all the uh, specializations that we can, uh, uh, those are uh, included in the civil engineering. Uh, to start with, we will start with the overall discussion for any uh, general problems in engineering and then gradually we will go uh, to the um, different disciplines of civil engineering. So, today's lecture is uh, on, the, um, on the probability and its role in civil engineering, though as I told, I will start with the general discussion of engineering first. As I told that uh, in the different lectures that will be covered in this course, uh, that for any, um, any queries that you may have, uh, my contact details are shown here. You can uh, contact me directly by email and this is my home page address. Uh, coming to the outline of today's uh, lecture, first I want to uh, draw your attention to the last point of this outline where um, I talk about the lecture wise corrections. So, uh, this is very important. So, I request all the audience to see this last um, uh, component of this particular uh, lecture before they proceed to the subsequent uh, lectures. There are some typos, some errors are there in the uh, subsequent uh, lectures and those will be uh, has discussed here for their, for their corrections. So, uh, after I complete that uh, general thing of today's lecture, this will be covered at the end of this lecture. So, as I told, um, I will first uh, start with the role of probability methods in engineering in general. Uh, basically, I will discuss about the concept of uncertainty and why this uncertainty is important and uh, how the probability methods can help in those situations. Coming to the um, different uh, applications in civil engineering, we will try to discuss is the overall uh, view. Uh, um, with respect to the environmental engineering, then geotechnical engineering, then hydrology and water resources engineering, structural engineering, construction planning and management, transportation engineering, etc. So, of course, uh, this may not be the uh, all the specialization that we can think of in civil engineering, there could be other specializations also, but I feel that after the um, uh, after discussing these things uh, uh, with respect to the role of the probability methods in this field, the idea um, can be communicated even uh, the some other areas in civil engineering which are not listed here. And finally, some uh, concluding remarks and after that the lecture wise corrections will be there. Also, uh, the reference uh, books for this course is also uh, shown at the end and this is also uploaded in the other uh, web pages. 
Well, so uh, coming to the role of uh, probability methods in engineering in general first, uh, there are the uncertainties are unavoidable in any engineering analysis and design. Initially, in earlier days, there are some uh, idealized assumptions and uh, simplification of natural processes are considered to ignore the uncertainty and uh, that help to adopt the deterministic of uh, or the quantitative approaches. Uh, however, uh, um, such assumptions or the simplifications are not sufficient in uh, many cases and uncertainties are unavoidable in almost all the engineering analysis and design that we can think of. So, irrespective of degree of sophistication in the quantitative uh, methods, because these methods are always based on some idealized assumption, so that those assumptions may not be valid under the existence of uncertainty. And this is where uh, the role of uh, probability methods are, are important. Now, if we want to discuss about the uncertainty, where it comes from and how we can tackle those things, we discuss little bit before we go to those uh, specific discussion how to handle it. There are, uh, uh, there are many sources where from the uncertainty generally arises from. So, here the two uh, major to broad uh, uh, directions are shown here. The first one is that incompleteness of the available information or data. Any engineering application that we think of generally based on the whatever our uh, data base that is available to us for any particular problem that we are ha handling. Now, that data uh, source or that data that is available to us is generally not uh, complete. Now, not complete or uh, complete to understand this concept in the probability theory first the two things are, are discussed. One is known as the population and other one is known as the sample. Now, when you call the population that is the collection of the all feasible uh, um, data that can that is possible in that particular attribute that we are talking, uh, to, uh, talking about. Say for example, if I take some, uh, some say some non-engineering uh, uh, pro uh, non problem first, say that uh, I just want to know that a height of a group of the student. Uh, so, there the all possible heights that can happen for that particular targeting group of the students that we are thinking of, that uh, is giving you the population. Now, when you want to have some estimate of uh, or any inference from that uh, for that attribute, you have to first take a group of a group of students and you have to measure that uh, that height. So that when you are considering a group of students and collecting their heights, that is your the sample. That is your the sample data. Now, that whatever the large sample that you can that you can consider that will never be the equal size of the population. So, the population is generally a concept where all feasible uh, uh, values of the data is av available. So, that is a concept and the sample data when we talk that is the from that population a particular subset of the data that we are talking about. Now, when we talk about the first the uncertainty. So, this is the point that first comes in the in the mind in the consideration is that incompleteness of the available information or the data. So, whatever the sample data whatever the information that you are that is available to us is not the complete. So, that is the first source of the uncertainty that we, we are we are supposed to uh, consider and this is true for any engineering application that we can think of. Secondly, the natural process and phenomena are inherently random. I can take one example here is that say for example, we are, uh, we are analyzing the rainfall data. Now, like rainfall there are several uh, phenomena are there uh, which, are, which are natural processes and when we are talking about some engineering application, many a times we have to, we have to consider the natural processes. 
and these natural processes are inherently random. So, you cannot uh, deterministically uh, state the particular value of, uh, of, that, uh, of that particular uh, natural process that we have considered. So, those natural processes being inherent, inherently random, so a source of uncertainty is also uh, embedded in that particular uh, data itself. So, when we measure that measurement and when we take some record, the length of this uh, record and that particular process, those all are constitute a, a the source of the uncertainty. So, having discussed about this source of uncertainty where this could arise, these are the two broad things that I, uh, that I discussed. But uh, the, so due to the existence of this uncertainty, it is not possible to take any, any definite decision of, uh, um, of any uh, problem that we, are, um, that we are thinking of because of the existence of such uncertainty. However, the decisions are required even with the incomplete information or data and for the natural pro from the for the natural processes so the even if i don't have that uh, that uh, proper information even if i don't have uh, the complete uh, data set but still the decisions are required so here when we are going for this uh, decision so we have to first assess that how much uncertainty is involved in it so there the probability methods are playing their roles so decisions under such situation are taken under the conditions of uncertainty so we have to consider the fact that the information that is available if that is uncertain that assessment of this uncertainty should be carried out first and with that one with that assessment we have to take some decision so thus the effect of the uncertainty in engineering problems are very important. Now, the coming to this probability theory that is the role of the probability me methods uh, in engineering first in general that it states that the probability theory provides a formal basis for quantifying risk or uncertainty in engineering problems which are otherwise being dealt with Quant, uh, qualitative approach using engineering judgment. So, this probability theory, this probability methods that we will be discussing in this course, giving some concept ideas, some problems also will be discussed. Those are basically is providing a formal basis to quantifying, to assess the uncertainty, the risk associated with that particular applications and after that assessment, we can take some decision or we can infer some, uh, some decision on that particular process which will help to implement some engineering project. So, broadly again, broadly again the role of uh, probability methods in engineering that we can, uh, we can summarize in three broad directions and this is taken from this Ang and Tang uh, book that textbook references are shown at the end. So, you can refer to those books also parallelly while referring to this lecture note, this uh, lecture uh, recordings. Uh, so the first one is the modeling of engineering problem and evaluation of system performance under condition of uncertainty. Now, when we are modeling that engineering engineering some engineering problem and we want to evaluate the system performance. So, obviously, as those we are dealing with some natural either some natural process and their data involved obviously, oh, when we want to evaluate that how the system is performing that obviously will not be deterministic and the help of the probabilistic method should be used. Secondly, the systematic development of design criteria explicitly taking into account the significance of uncertainty. That means, when we are uh, developing some um, design criteria, particularly when we call that the safety, fa safety factor, 
uh, is used in all this uh, design criteria so when we develop those design uh, those design criteria which are mostly uh, is uh, is some standard codes are developed based on that those things those criteria are based on this uh, probability a uh, probabilistic concept and third one is the it provides a logical framework for the risk assessment and risk benefit trade off analysis uh, relative to the decision making now this risk assessment and the benefit trade off is very important in any engineering application that we can think of uh, that means that we can go for a very uh, very strong uh, or uh, very much safe uh, structures or very much safe engineering product but at the same, same time that cost will be very high or we can go we can relax some uh, uh, some uh, some requirement and so that will uh, reduce that total uh, cost uh, even if going one step further is that there are two types of cost are also there one is known as the initial cost another one is known as the maintenance cost now if the initial cost is high then it is expected that the maintenance cost will be low and vice versa if the initial cost is low then maintenance cost will be high so the total cost when you are determining also there is a uh, there is a trade off and that from the total cost to the benefit and benefit here not only in terms of this monetary also the tangible and intangible both so that when you go for some kind of trade off analysis you have to do that where we should fix the total cost as well as the benefit so this type of trade off analysis when we require due to the inherent uncertainty in several aspects of this engineering problems the usefulness of uh, this probability methods is very very important so these are the uh, three broad directions where the uh, probability methods plays a vital role now the uncertainty and probability methods so as we got some idea by this time is that the probability methods helps us to uh, assess quantify and uh, understand the implication effect of the uncertainty on on any engineering problem so we have to so uh, when we talk about this uncertainty and the probability methods first of all uh, we have to uh, consider uh, the uncertainty and we have to know that where from the major so, uh, which are the major source of uncertainties here the three uh, broad uh, directions are shown here listed uh, here the parameter uncertainties data uncertainties and operational uncertainties in the parameter uncertainties inability in quantifying accurate model parameters and the inherent variability in the model inputs and the parameters so whichever model whichever mathematical or probabilistic model that we are thinking of first we have to estimate that parameter and in that parameter as we are developing those parameters from some sample data just now we have discussed what is it the sample data and data itself is not the representation of the complete population so that whatever the model parameter that we estimate those are also not uh, def, uh, not the not a deterministic estimate so those some uncertainties are involved in those model parameters itself which is known as the parameter uncertainty second one is the data uncertainty and this data uncertainty may arises from several things first one is the error is in measurement this error in measurement means when we are talking about that the measurement of the strength of a concrete now how we are measuring that so that measurement process may be uncertain when we are talking about the measurement of this rainfall how much rainfall has occurred so that measurement technique may be may be uncertain so those are the errors which are which are associated with the measurement techniques of any particular data that you are uh, that we are dealing with so this is the error in the measurement second one is the problems in the consistency and the homogeneity of the data so sometimes some uh, uh, some data that we take from particular uh, location and uh, it is not assured it is not guaranteed that it will be specially uniform or 
uh, even that or the temporarily uh, uniform. So this is one and again sometimes what happens that we uh, some, due to some re uh, reasons that that measurement process that measurement instrument sometimes is replaced by a new one or a or a uh, updated one. So there if we just see the data there could be some problem of the consistency. So that consistency as well as homogeneity, homogeneity in both in the spatial direction and in the in the temporal direction. So this could have some problems in this one which leads to the data uncertainty. And third one is the limitations in the adequate representation of the sample data. Uh, we will discuss uh, this uh, application when in detail that how from the sample data we generally estimate the estimate the properties of the population then it will be more uh, clear. So here now the thing is that in briefly I can mention that whatever the sample data that we are ha having we use that data to to estimate to assess that assess the properties of that particular population where from the data is drawn. Now, if the data is if the data does not represent that the population or there are some there are some systematic or some bias to a particular direction of that probability is of the associated probability distribution then uh, uh, then the the assessment then the estimate of this entire population that we will make from that particular data will be erroneous so this is what is that uh, limitations in the adequate representation of the sample data and third one is the operational uncertainties now uh, the uh, the some of the conditions under which the particular uh, structural component or the particular process that we have that we have modeled if those operational conditions are changed then the performance of that particular uh, model or performance of the particular uh, components will uh, change so this is the change in the operational uh, uh, conditions and then the uh, within this again another issue is that the errors uh, those are associated with the construction, manufacture, deterioration, maintenance, human activities, etc. also leads to the operational uncertainties. Now, the, once we know the broad uh, source of the um, of different uncertainty, now the second thing is that uncertainty assessment. And there are several techniques are there to assess the uncertainty and these things will be discussed in details in the subsequent lectures. The first one is the analytical technique and the approximation techniques. In the analytical techniques, we generally try to derive the distribution, uh, different probabilistic distribution that is known as the derived distribution technique. Secondly, the probability and the quantile estimation. That uh, probability estimation from the from the data, we want to know that okay, what is the what is the probability that the value will not exceed this particular value or the value will lie between this particular range. Those are the probability estimations and there are different quantiles that we can estimate that give some idea about the spread of this data and its distribution of the, of the probability. So these quantile estimations are directly, a, a, is directly computed from the available data. There are other approximation techniques are also there for example, uh, first order variance estimation method, probabilistic point estimation method, Monte Carlo simulation etc. Uh, there is resampling techniques are also available sometimes uh, when the data set is very small. Uh, if we want to increase the number of data points keeping the statistical properties same that time we generally use these resampling techniques and there are different resampling techniques are there. The jackknife method, bootstrap methods are two examples for them. Then the now we know that there is the uncertainty and considering those, uh, uh, those uncertainty there are several the reliability analysis techniques are there. The uh, load resistance inference computation to compute this one there are several methods available the direct integration method. Uh, so this direct integration method means that I have some, uh, some load I have some resistance 
uh, and I just want to know that how much reliable that particular system is. Uh, but please note that when I talk about this load and the resistance, it is not only uh, for any the structural component, but it is also for any uh, other application can also happen. So, here the what we mean the load is that how much is that particular component is supposed to uh, receive and the resistance means that how this uh, particular structure will uh, will uh, will stay safe against those external disturbances. So uh, I think if I give some example of this water resource uh, application, then it will be more uh, clearer. Say for example, some water resource project is there on which that how much is that uh, is that hydrologic component that is. Uh, that is affecting that particular uh, system is my load here and how long or to what extent that particular system can withstand. So, that is the resistance from that system. So, these things are generally uh, for both for this load and the resistance that uh, um, distribution of those load and the resistance are inferred first and it is, uh, it is now that from this direct integration method we compute that to what extent that particular uh, resistance is, uh, is uh, greater than the load. So, in a probabilistic concept of course, so that is the direct integration method. There are other methods are also there like uh, mean value first order second moment method, advanced first order second moment method. In the time to failure analysis, uh, the analysis of the failure and repair characteristics is there analysis for availability and unavailability of the different resources that is required to execute a particular uh, pro, uh, project that is for a um, specific example that I am telling now. So, those things are uh, useful for this time to failure analysis and where the, uh, the concept of probability is used. Okay, so, coming to the applications in civil engineering, as I told earlier that focus of this course is at the roles of the probability methods in different civil engineering fields. So, so far we have discussed in general that what are the roles of this uh, different uh, methods in, in engineering in general. Now, but this course is uh, for as you can see from the title of this course, we will be discussing about the its different aspects of the civil engineering. So, you know that this there are different uh, specializations are there, uh, environmental engineering, geotechnical engineering, hydrology and water resource engineering, structural engineering, construction planning and management, transportation engineering and of course, there are others the list may not be complete. So, we will be <coughs> uh, discussing some of this concept uh, those are related to specific to this particular different uh, specializations. So, these are the different specialization and also that different operations which are general for all this uh, all these uh, specializations is that for different uh, operations. So, for the system identification and the model selection, damage and deterioration, loss estimation, uh, risk assessment and management, hazard analysis, probabilistic design, risk based optimal design and maintenance and inspection for for this uh, uh, these things that uh, the probability methods are uh, very much used in these uh, aspects so coming to the environmental engineering first this environmental engineering uh, uh, the environmental risk assessment so that several issues are uh, involved in it for example that health effects impact on natural resources or man-made structures due to pollution, change in climatic conditions, water quality of this of the streams. So, these are several issues which are involved in this environmental uh, uh, risk assessment and there are different mo um, models are used. One is the parametric models, non-parametric models and empirical mo models. So, as you as we discuss in general that for this model when you go for some parameter estimates and all. So, there the concept of uh, probability methods are useful. In operations under this environmental risk assessment, the estimation of model parameters, then identification of probability distribution for some particular data uh, related to this uh, in environmental application, then determination of dependencies among the variables, 
so I so there are different uh, issues or there are different process which which is uh, in 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 this environmental engineering uh, field which are generally influencing to e each other sometimes uh, how they are affecting to each other whether the quantification of one particular variable can give some assessment for the other so this type of ap application then uh, estimation of the model uncertainties so this uh, these are the different operation uh, application where the probability methods are very well used uh, coming to the geotechnical engineering uh, there are several sources of uncertainties are there. Uh, first one is the variable nature in the rock that affects the load bearing capacity. Now you know that the natural de deposits of these rocks has con are, um, are uh, ha having different faults and fissures in it which are, uh, which are having some impact on its overall load bearing capacity. Now, to assess that we cannot inspect each and every point of the of, of the rock formation so we have to uh, assess the overall uh, load bearing capacity in a probabilistic uh, in, in in a probabilistic manner secondly that when we see that there are some say, several uh, layers of the deposits are there uh, from the foundation which uh, are consist of this clay silt sand uh, di different uh, layers are there and these layers are of random so you cannot uh, so if you just go to the site explore the soil you, we cannot uh, conclude that that is the thing that is uh, having the uniform distribution across the space so we have very limited uh, soil sample from the exploration re result but from there we have to assess the overall uh, quality of uh, the subgrade and from where we can assess some bearing capacity and that bearing capacity will be useful for the uh, design of the superstructures. So the heterogeneous soil properties and other in situ conditions, so to assess uh, these things that uh, so this, this, this properties are uncertain. Then the reliability of the design and the construction method, there are several uh, methods are there, there which is followed in design and the construction at uh, site. So those are also constitute the uncertainties in the overall performance. Then cost and the benefit of the proposed design strategies. So when we adopt some particular design strategy, there are some cost involved and there are some outcome um, in terms of its benefit. So there is again some kind of a trade off analysis is also re required to select a particular uh, combination and here also in this trade off analysis also the uh, so that uh, that uh, it is uncertain and the role of probability is uh, is used so the probability and the uncertainty assessment this is uh, carried out through the histogram analysis sample mean variance standard deviation coefficient of variance these are the basic statistics that we use to uh, have some idea about the data and then the probability density uh, function estimate and these things will be again discussed in detail in the subsequent lectures and also one more po point here uh, to be mentioned here that even if we are discussing now the geotechnical engineering particularly this soil sample and their exploration but these things are used for it can be used in any any engineering application to any particular engineering data that is available uh, to us to assess that overall uh, the basic statistics for those data. So here that uh, uh, when we talk about this uh, histogram an analysis, I can take a minute to just tell the what is this histogram. So uh, we take some as the data that is av av available to us, suppose that this overall range of this data. Now uh, for this lower side there could be some there could, could be some area where the most of this data are concentrated and then again some distribution is sparse and all. So the histogram here means that this overall range can be divided into, into several uh, bins. Uh, so several uh, bins which are mostly what we consider to be that equal uh, size. Now in within each bin we count the number of data points that is, uh, that is available and that is divided by this overall uh, um, the total number of observations we generally uh, plot some, some bars 
and this bar gives some so wherever there are more uh, data set obviously the height of this bar will be will be more so this is known as the histogram of this uh, of this data which generally gives us a, a idea that how is the data is distributed and from there there are some techniques where we can fit some uh, some smooth uh, line which is known as this probability distribution function so uh, so basically from there this one we uh, use as a representation of the population where from that data is taken and uh, one small point is that so there are some uh, there is no fixed rule that for this overall range uh, how many bins will be will be considered in this case so sometimes that means there are some uh, thumb rules are there and mostly we generally use that uh, k equals to log of log 2 base n plus 1. Uh, so this a n here is that total number of observations. Sometimes we use that k equals to the square root of n. Uh, so sometimes we decide that k is equals to that total range that is the maximum minus minimum minus minimum divided by that uh, some age that width of this uh, each bin. Now this width of this each bin is for that particular application that we are considering for that particular data that is available to us for depending on their nature. So there is no fixed rule that how many bins that I I will be using to find out this histogram. Mostly we use this equation we can use, but obviously this is not that uh, uh, not the only equation that we uh, generally use to decide that how many bins will be there while considering that histogram. So sim similarly that other things we will be discussing in this subsequent lecture then coming back to that that we are discussing in this geotechnical engineering its ap application. Now uh, the estimation of the in situ properties from the limited soil samples this in brief I discussed few minutes before that I have very limited soil samples because I cannot explore the soil uh, everywhere in the site. Uh, so from, uh, from very limited soil sample I have to estimate the what is the in situ in situ properties that I have to assess and in that assessment uh, procedure the probabilistic methods are used. Then comparison of the field test to the field performance data. So we compare uh, the, the testing and their field, per, field uh, performance de, 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 uh, data. So these are not the one to one correspondence is not there, there is obviously some uncertainty involved in it and we use some probabilistic method. Uh, coming to the hydrology and water resource engineering, uh, there are several uh, issues are involved where this role of probability methods is very important. Uh, the estimation of hydrologic extreme events, for example, the probable maximum precipitation, probable maximum flood, uh, these are basically there is even before this there is a concept called that uh, estimated limiting value ELV that estimated limiting value means for a particular climatic condition for a particular site what is a uh, what is the maximum feasible value of an hydrologic event that can happen in that in that particular location so that is known as this estimated limiting value now when we are considering that uh, precipitation it is that uh, probable maximum precipitation and when you are considering that uh, flood it is a probable maximum flood now again this is depending on that what structure for what for, uh, what for you are uh, you are estimating this uh, this particular uh, quantities now uh, depending on the which structure we are talking about if it is a large dam or if it is a, a simple drainage network obviously those values will change depending on their design design life and if the structure fails what is the consequence on those those is, those issues so when we we estimate this this these quantities that probable maximum precipitation and probable maximum flood. So we have some limited data say, say that last 30 years and from that data fitting some probability distribution I want to uh, assess I want to uh, have some idea that what could what should be the what should be my design um, va design values for the precipitation or the flood for the structure that that I am considering. Secondly the hydrologic prediction and you know that being the natural process these predictions are always associated with some uncertainty and to assess that uncertainty 
uh, we have to use that different probabilistic me methods are being used. And um, similarly, the design of this hydraulic structure, when we there are concepts like the design life, risk analysis. The design life means that I consider that this particular structure over is supposed to uh, give the sur give service for this many years. Uh, so, the um, more costly and more important structures which are having some implication, uh, their failure may cause a tremendous loss, generally we consider a very high design life for that, uh, so, so, so that uh, rate of failure will be very uh, low. So, estimation of this hydrologic extreme events, hydrologic predictions, design of this hydrologic structure, so all these things we used that different probabilistic concept. Now, the source of uncertainty in different hydrologic events and water resource engineering uh, projects are uh, mainly from the incompleteness of the historical data that we discussed at the starting of this lecture. Then limitation of the adequate representation of the sample data, that is the data is not able to add, not able to represent its population, if it is not then uh, the overall assessment of the population will be wrong. Uh, variability of the hydrologic data. Uh, and the uncertain predictions, uh, the whenever we are using some pre, pre, some predictions from the mo model, those predictions are also associated with some uncertainty. Now, to assess the uncertainty, those are uh, involved in this hydrology and water resource. We uh, we fit the data to some uh, to some distribution. Distribution means here the probability distribution function that we are talking about. We will discuss in details these things in subsequent lectures. Then probability and quantile estimations and the interval estimation of the parameters which are which we can uh, have some estimate from the data av available using some uh, probabilistic technique. Coming to the structural engineering, we know that the failure can cause excessive monetary loss and injury or death. So, uh, this is very important to uh, sometimes for some structure we keep the failure rate is very, very low. So, when we discuss about the source of uncertainty for the structural engineering, there are several so sources are there. The first one itself is the magnitude of, this, of the load. So, how much load uh, I should consider? For example, the determination of the maximum wind effect. If we are considering the uh, some the effect of the hurricane on some coastal structure, the first of all the occurrence of this hurricane itself is probabilistic. And once it occurs, then how much load it should be considered. So that again that that de depends on the if we consider that the the maximum possible load obviously the cost of the structure will be very high. And again, if we don't uh, if we if we relax some of this uh, this criteria then obviously the quality of the structure or the rate or the probability of failure will, will be high. So, here that some probabilistic assessment is required. Similarly, the consideration of the earthquake force for a particular location, the occurrence of earthquake with different intensity is also probabilistic, has to be assessed probabilistically and then we can consider that particular load. So, in that, uh, in that assessment of the load that the structure should face is itself is uncertain. Second one is the strength of the structural material. Say for example, whatever the quality control we, we maintain uh, while, uh, um, while producing the structural material. So, that strength uh, varies uh, from one sample to another, another sample. So, the strength of structural um, material whether we can talk about anything like concrete or steel or even and the composite ma materials, their strengths are, are also, uh, also uh, uncertain. Third one is the number of load cycles until the fatigue failure. So, this fatigue fa failure means that the, the load that is the, that the structure is supposed to, it is safe under that load, but it is, if there is a cycle of loading and unloading, so uh, of the same load after some cycles the structure fails and this is known as the fatigue failure. So, the number of cycles that a particular structural component can take before it fails is, is that number is also uncertain. So, here the number of load cycles until the fatigue failure is, un is uncertain. 
So, now when we call that the structure is safe, that time we are asking that the one of the most important uh, question in structural design is that the how safe is safe and enough. So, thing is that we can never assure that anything that is 100 percent safe. So, there is uh, no such uh, uh, no such concept. So, depending on the importance of the structure, we develop some criteria, uh, um, criteria uh, based on the probabilistic concept to assess that so that structure should be safe enough. Now, extremely low rate of this of the failure. So, when we quantify that the rate of failure, the probability of this failure, obviously we have to use the concept of this probability. Determination of the safety factor. So, different safety factors are used for different uh, components. Uh, so, those when we determine that, uh, um, that safety factor, we consider the risk or the probability of the failure of that particular uh, structural component. Then uh, low probability, high consequence risk ev events, the key this is basically the key issue in the design of the complex structure such as the offshore structure, nuclear plants, or high exposure to the public, uh, high exposure public structures where the probability of failure is kept very, very low. Now, when you talking that probability of failure is kept very, very low, obviously we are assessing, we are using some probabilist, some probability concept. In probabilistic risk analysis, there are different steps are there. there. First is that um, the definition of the context and the system, then the hazard scenario identification, then uh, the analysis of this consequence. Uh, probability of occurrence estimation, then risk scenario identification, uh, sensitivity anal analysis, perf uh, performance of the sensitivity analysis, then uh, the estimated risk with the uh, with the design uh, with the de uh, decision criteria is compared, uh, then the risk treatment actions are taken, and uh, the risk assessment with the updated information is revised based on whatever the in information is available to us. Now, in this probabilistic risk analysis steps, you can now you can uh, easily imagine that this the without the without the concept of this probability, there are many steps which uh, cannot be uh, completed. Now, the design optimi optimization, the probabilistic structural design optimization uh, is helps to handle the uncertainty in the material properties, geometry, loading, boundary condition and the mathematical simulation that we have discussed uh, just now. And the development of the standard of acceptance, there are several codes are there, there are several design criteria are, are uh, listed there in, in the in the uh, in different standards and to develop those standards uh, we use the concept of this probability and it should be made uh, clear that the, the criteria should not be too stringent or too lax. Uh, one example is the characteristic strength of this concrete, we can take a minute on this that when we talk about that the characteristic the strength of a concrete uh, that time we use. Uh, that some concept of this probability again. So, we develop some, uh, we, we adopt some mixed design and develop some sample and when we test that what is the load bearing capacity for those samples and it varies from one sample to another sample. Now, it is uh, stated in these standards that uh, the strength which is exceeded by the 95 percent which is bared by this 95 percent of this of the sample that is uh, uh, taken as the characteristic strength. Now, this 95 percent is the concept is the concept that is coming from the probability. So, uh, so here when li like this there are several design criteria are listed in this in the different standards which are based on the probability concept. Uh, coming to the construction planning and management, there are several factors which are uncertain and cannot be stated in a definite o way. For example, the duration of the various activities in a construction project that will take. There are several uh, factors are involved in it to determine the duration, the um, timely availability of the material, the, the time of supply that is uncertain, then availability of the required man, um, uh, manpower that is uncertain, the weather condition, whether that particular weather condition, that particular job will be executed or not. So, these are all several source where the uh, 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 which are making this overall process is very uncertain. 
but we considering this uncertainty the total duration of the project or the duration of some sub project of this entire project has to be determined with some confidence level. Now, with some confidence level uh, means that at some level we have to uh, we have to we have to determine because that uh, that in that uh, total duration that estimation of the cost is involved. In the transportation in engineering the uncertainty generally sourced from this vagueness, ambiguity, risk against safety and the events are generally again the low probability and high risk the accident in the air traffic movement, accidents on the highway are the examples. And an example of the pavement design can be considered here design factors width of the pavement, thickness of the subgrade layer and all. So, considering these thicknesses the total cost is determined and the total cost is generally depending on these different factors say for example, thickness. So, the when you talk about the thickness and the total cost of this pavement then a kind of the trade off analysis is considered and in that trade off analysis the probability methods are, are used. So, this is that these all these factors are ra random that we have discussed and the trade off analysis and the total cost estimation uh, we have to use that different probability methods are being used. So, coming to the conclusion that role of probability methods generally lies in the generally lies in the assessment of the uncertainty involved in different engineering process and from these uh, once we assess this uncertainty this information is useful to draw some decision to infer some decision to give some judgment uh, based on the uh, to the particular engineering application and for this the different probabilistic methods are being used which will be discussed particularly with respect to the applications in the civil engineering. As I told at the uh, starting uh, that there are some several uh, lecture wise corrections are there. So, the first column if you see that gives you the which lecture number which module and in that module what is the lecture no number. So, here, here this number is the overall lecture number and this lecture number is that within that module what is the lecture number. Second column refers uh, second column refers to the slide number, third column is the what is the statement that is made and the fourth one is that what should be the corrected one. So, like this you can just refer to these few sli uh, slides to there are some typos are there are um, there which are corrected here. So, these things can be referred to to avoid any confusion. Well, so after stating all these things I hope that you will get some idea about these uh, mistakes or typos and all uh, even if I cannot tell you that these are the only uh, typos are there and uh, I am uh, assuming that the audience will be able to uh, have, uh, have their ability to identify those uh, typos are there so in the line of the examples that are there, but mostly it is, uh, is limited to this, uh, these few uh, corrections. These are the references that you can refer to in parallel to the referring to these subsequent lectures and uh, this is all about that our uh, today's introductory uh, class and we will see you again uh, from the next lecture onwards. Thank you.